Good morning, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us. I must ask you, first of all, before we go on to you, Les, which I think is a big topic of conversation today, about the UK air traffic control fault over Bank Holiday Monday. Thousands of people still stranded abroad, possibly for days, um, still trying to get back out and some people get into the country. Um, can you tell us, do we know yet what the fault was? Uh, we're told it was a technical fault. What was the cause of that problem? Julia, just before I say that, can I just add my apology to what National Air Traffic Services said yesterday uh, for all those people that have been impacted. Thousands of people were affected yesterday with the flights that were cancelled. I know how difficult that will have been for people um, and people have been working very hard to get the system back up and running. It was a technical issue yesterday with their flight planning uh, system. It was not a, it was not a computer hack? No, it wasn't. Uh, our experts have looked at that. It wasn't a cyber security incident. It was a technical issue with their flight planning system. They had to revert to their fail-safe system to make sure people could keep flying in and out of the country but the safely. But the backup is system... Their top priority, but has less capacity. Yeah, but the computerised backup system didn't work, I understand, which is why they had to go effectively to inputting by hand. So whose fault is that? And where are people who've been affected by this? Some people have been missing work today, holidays ruined. Um, who's, going to, who's going to pay compensation to those people? Because they've got no right to compensation from the airlines. So, so on the first point, uh, the important thing is that they focus on a system that works safely, but it has less capacity. There will be an independent look into exactly what happened. Uh, they're regulated by the Civil Aviation Authority, and a report will come to me, and we'll look carefully to see whether there are lessons to be learned uh, for the future. We haven't had an outage on this scale for the best part of a decade, but we'll look very carefully to see what more needs to be done. Airlines have a responsibility to look after their customers, to get them back home, to look after them if they're delayed, to put them up in accommodation overnight if that's required. So that is a responsibility of airlines. I tweeted out the but link to that yesterday on the CAA website. Um, the, the, those are issues for airlines and for the CAA to look at, but the airlines have a responsibility to get people home as quickly as they can, and I know airlines were working incredibly hard yesterday and continue to do so to look after their customers. OK, let's talk about, so rather closer to home to where you are. You're in the middle of the ULS zone. That's being expanded today uh, by the London Mayor Sadiq Khan to the whole of the M25 area. Millions more people coming within the remit, but 700,000 plus cars uh, will be affected in terms of not being compliant, facing a £12.50 a day fine just for even driving, well, charge, even just for driving out of their driveway and 150,000 vans. The government say they don't support this expansion, so why didn't you block it? So, Julia, I don't have the power, the legal yes, power, to block this scheme from coming into force. No, I don't. There's lots of people talked about a, a piece of legislation. It simply does not give me the power to block it. I looked at it very carefully to see whether there was anything we could do to block it, uh, and there isn't. This is a decision by the Labour Mayor of London, backed by the Labour leader. He's saying he's doing it to deal with the air pollution, but the impact assessment that he commissioned, that he's published, makes it clear that it will only have a minor to negligible effect on air quality. Mm -hmm. This is about raising money for him and putting in place an infrastructure that his own website, his Project 2030 scheme, says is about rolling out a road user charging scheme in the future to charge people for driving in London. I don't want driving to become the preserve of the rich. Uh, <laughs> this will impact the poorest motorists uh, and it's the wrong thing to do. Um, can I say, I mean, all of your net zero policies will make driving the preserve of the rich, but I will come back to that. Um, you're saying, look, you've looked into the legalities of this. You, uh, you're quoting about the Greater London Authority Act 1999. I remember sitting in Parliament as an Evening Standard reporter covering all the debates on this. Section 143 gives the Secretary of State for Transport the power to block any policy, quote, which is inconsistent with national politics relating to transport, unquote, and, quote, if the inconsistency is detrimental to any area outside Greater London. Well, clearly, the local counties around London, you say their, their road users will be affected and will face this charge. It is detrimental to them. Um, so what do those powers mean in that 1999 Act if they don't mean the ability of the Transport Secretary to overrule the London Mayor? Well, that Act, which was passed by the Labour government, uh, doesn't give me the power to block it. There isn't a national policy 
on this. We looked very carefully to see whether it would be possible to do anything to put one in place, and it was clear from the advice I took that it simply wouldn't have worked. I looked very carefully at this for exactly the reasons I've set out about what's wrong with the scheme, and I do not have the power to block it. I've tested that carefully, and I simply don't have the power. This is a decision of the Labour Mayor. Uh, it's being done for raising money and putting in place infrastructure for future road user charging and the government doesn't support it. OK, you said just earlier that this was about, you know, making driving the preserve of the rich and that Sadiq Khan, and he denies this, but it's on his Transport for London website, which he's in charge, uh, are looking at a pay-per-mile plan. Um, it's a bit strange for the government to be critical of that, but your government's been looking at this as well. No, we're, we're not in favour of, of doing that at all. I want people to be able to drive uh, and to be mobile. What we're looking at doing to deal with our climate change obligations in the future is about making sure we can get zero emission vehicles, but it's about people continuing to be able to be mobile. I know how important cars are for many people across the country, constituency like mine, you need a car to get about. We want people to be able to be mobile and continue having the freedom no, but one, no, but, to do. With all due respect, Mr Arbor, wanting to sure people to be mobile is lovely. We all want that. But, but it is a matter of fact that the Department for Transport has repeatedly looked at road pricing, paper mile schemes as an option. You are looking at a policy. You are, you are the front, you know, the face of a no. policy. But in 2030, we will see uh, the ban on the sale of new petrol, diesel and hybrid cars. That's what your government has elected on your manifesto. That's what you're still pledged to do. That's what I've, I asked the, the now Prime Minister at the hustings the other year about that. He's still pledged to do that. That will make buying a car and running a vehicle more expensive for most people. It will price many people off the roads. So to say you want, you, you think that the, the, the London Mayor is wrong to make driving the preserve of the rich, you're doing exactly the same thing. Well, it's two, two separate things here. We're, we are absolutely not looking at, at a road pricing scheme. The Department for Transport is absolutely not doing any such thing. That's simply not true. You've repeated On it. Your government question has about, repeated, repeatedly uh, looked at it. No, no uh, I, I am not looking at such a scheme. The Department for Transport is not looking at a road user scheme. The thing you're talking about is what's on the Labour Mayor's website, which is his no, scheme. No, I know what I'm talking about. In London. We're absolutely respect. not looking at it. Ju Julia, I'm, I'm telling you. You're saying you're not looking at it not now? Looking at a road pricing scheme. On your, well, no, we're not looking at such a scheme. On your issue about zero emission vehicles, we're very clear, yes, there is, a cl there is an issue with climate change about reducing carbon. We've got a scheme which we'll be publishing the details of later this year, which we've consulted on closely with car companies about moving to zero emission vehicles. They are cheaper to run. Uh, because uh, of the lower costs of, of, of fueling them um, and they're about making sure people can continue driving but driving in a way which doesn't damage the environment and I think that is the right balance to strike. Oh, well, you say right balance to strike. Lots of people are rather concerned about that. Uh, in terms of um, the, the claims being made, Sadiq Khan, about the, the pollution levels in London and 4,000 deaths a year in London, it's been claimed 30,000 more, between 26 and I think 38,000 deaths around the country from, uh, from pollution. Those are figures I've heard spouted actually again and again by Conservatives as well. You know, you'll have looked into this, that that's not true, don't you? Well, look, look, the scheme that he's rolling out here, which is to expand it across Greater London, his own impact assessment, I've looked at, I always think it's useful to look at you know, many conversations you and I have had in the past about looking at evidence. His own impact assessment says rolling out ULEs across Greater London is not going to impact air quality. It's going to have a minor to negligible improvement in air quality. So all of his arguments about air quality are simply not true. It's about raising money from hard-pressed Londoners uh, and, I, and hitting the poorest motorists, and I don't think that's the right thing to do. OK, I want to ask you also about crime. We've had the Home Secretary, your colleague in Cabinet, Swella Braverman, saying at the weekend that uh, Met, she's going to order Met, uh, Met Pond Police and all the other police around the country to actually, um, in, actually to investigate every single 
crime, no matter how, inverted commas, low level, including thefts, shoplifting uh, and the like. And we also had the Met Police Chief saying that police officers need to be, uh, seem to be uh, uh, non-biased and to not to support BLM or, or, or green issues or anything when they're on duty. Do you think it's a bit strange that after 13 years of Conservative government, we've got a Home Secretary and a Met Chief telling police officers they need to just, I don't know, do their job? Well, look, I think... Well, I heard the Home Secretary's various interviews yesterday. She was making it quite clear. Crime has fallen uh, since this government's been in power, but she's looking at how we can continue to go further. We've hired 20,000 new police officers. We freed up police time, for example, by making sure that they don't have to take responsibility for dealing with people with a mental health crisis. And we want to make sure that they are follow up every reasonable lead for what has been in the past treated as crimes that have less impact. We all know, though, that, that even some of those crimes that have been treated in the past less seriously have a big impact on people. And those police forces have agreed to follow up every reasonable lead. I think that's a real step forward which will help people feel safer, uh, solve more crimes and continue reducing the levels of crime okay. as we have done since we've been in power since 2010. Just finally, um, Nadine Dorries, former Culture Secretary, one of your former co uh, colleagues in the Cabinet, she has uh, said she will now resign from her mid bedfordshire seat, prompting a by-election, which is very likely the Tories uh, will lose a, over 25,000 majority in that seat to either Labour or the Liberal Democrats. She's written a stinging a resignation letter criticising soon, Rishi Sunak, uh, saying he's not going to win the next election. Election, uh, and the Tories are split. Um, would it have been better if Rishi Sunak had just given her the peerage that she wanted? Well, uh, I think you've put your finger on something there that people will have their own views about. I, I looked at her letter. I don't agree with any of it. But look, you're right. The by-election is going to be tough. Uh, all mid-term by-elections are tough. We've got a fantastic candidate in Festus, who's the police and crime commissioner there. He's well known. Uh, well respected and well liked. I know that from doors that I've knocked on. We'll be fighting hard for every vote. But you're right, it's tough midterm by elections. It won't be an easy fight, but we're going to go out there and okay. give it everything we've got. All right, Transport Secretary Mark Harper, really appreciate you joining us there live from Westminster.